Well, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to uh, introduce NASCAR Next, NASCAR Home Track, and uh, multi-time limited late model winner from uh, yeah, Motor Mile. Yeah, multi I kind of told them everything up until last year when you went west so that you could kind of uh, go ahead and oh. have, a, have a seat with the mic. I'm and, new to uh, this, sorry. I got them to your, your plane ride out west and uh, take us from there to today. Yeah, so uh, uh, 2015 first was a really great season because it was my first full season back in racing after graduating from Stanford. So, you know, kind of this question, can I, do I still have it? Can I still be a champ? And we won four of the eight races at Motor Mile and won the championship, being the first woman to do so, which was super exciting. And then after that, I got the opportunity to race in the K&N West Series with Bill McAnally Racing, and it was my rookie season. And, um, you know, got several podiums, um, a bunch of top fives, and only had one race outside the top ten, which was really really good for a rookie and I ended up fourth in points which was the highest finish for a female in the series 62 year history. So with that it was kind of a huge confidence boost and um, excitement with going after you know the higher ranks of NASCAR and this year I just signed with uh, Bob Brunkati's Sunrise Ford Racing Team for my sophomore year in the K&N West Series and uh, we're going for the championship. You know I'm really confident I got all the learning curves out of the way last year and so we're going to go try to beat the boys uh, where I can next uh, this 2017. Um, the beginning of 2017, I was also honored by being selected to the Forbes 30 under 30 list for sports, which to be on the same list with Simone Biles was pretty humbling and pretty cool. Um, and so we're, we're starting off strong and really trying to carry my unique brand uh, where I can in racing and bring in some new types of partners to the sport. And that's what we're going to be working on all year. Well, let's let them ask some questions. Deb, have, did you have one that you said yes. when Julia comes? And then we'll get to the others. Good morning, Julia. Deb Williams with ESPNW. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Nice to see you in person. Uh, nice to see you in person as well. Um, uh, when you look at your, what you got your degree in at Stanford and then your time that you were on Survivor on the TV show there, what are those two things that you took away from there to help you in your career, and number two is, how did you decide to go and major what you majored in at Stanford because of the racing career you wanted to pursue? Right, great questions. Um, so I majored as a Bachelor of Science in Science, Technology, and Society, so somewhat interdisciplinary. And um, the biggest thing that did for me was really give me some technical literacy to enhance my feedback and make it better than it already was. Um, and so that taught me a lot. Survivor was so challenging, a much better race car driver than reality TV show contestant. Um, but it, it really taught me that, that perseverance and, um, you know, you're, you're physically at the end of what you think you're capable of. You're starving. I was, got super skinny and so just was lacking energy, but you still have these challenges that you have to go win and your team's depending on you. So to really push through everything that you can to, to be the best that you can be was what Survivor really helped me get better at. Lewis Frank. Lewis Frank of Reuters. How do you do? Uh, as speaking as one new, ex New Yorker to another, I lived on the Upper East Side, Upper West Side. I was asking, what what borough? Did Manhattan, Upper West Side. Okay. Yeah, by Lincoln Center. Yeah. Uh, I was a little further up by Central Park, up past Columbus Circle. Oh, cool. Yep, exactly. That's my neighborhood. There we go. <laughs> Zay bars, fairway. Miss it so much. Fairway is the big one. Our grocery store. Right. That Sorry. Is. Okay, so. New York City, as you know, is not a hotbed of racing. Crosstown traffic moves at four miles an hour. What sparked your interest in motorsports? Yeah, so my parents actually were looking for a sport that me and my siblings could do together on the weekends, and it's me, my sister, and my brother, and they also wanted a sport that their girls could compete against boys, so there just aren't very many co-ed sports, and they liked racing. I grew up watching Formula One and sports car racing, and that got us into go-karts, and then I fell in love with it, and you know, a few years later kind of switched to more of the oval route in NASCAR. Um, but we had to drive about two hours outside of the city to get to the go-kart track that I raced at, um, but I loved it, so we did. Lee Spencer. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. It's good to see you since Irwindale last year. Can you kind of talk about how you progressed past that point and what are your expectations moving forward? What do you think the next step beyond K&N Pro Series West is for you? 
Yeah, definitely. So Irwindale was the start of the season in 2016, and we ran close up to the top five and then got, you know, eighth. And um, from there, we just, I really wanted to get consistent finishes, get into the top five, which we did a few races later, get onto the podium, which we did just a little shy of the win. But, um, you know, I want to win. I'm going for the championship this year. I think I can do it. And, um, you know, trying to move up to the trucks and the other national series as soon as we can. Stan. Ah. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Julia, Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Um, obviously, you get asked about Survivor a lot, and um, you, you have an interesting backstory with that. Do you get a sense that there's a lot of people in the garage who saw you on the show, or do they hear, like, oh, you were on, but I didn't see you then? Like, how, how many people watched that season, do you think? Well, regardless of how many people watched, I only got so much airtime. So, you know, some people may have missed me if you blinked. Um, but no, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't quite get the edit that I would have hoped for. Um, I think I got to see some other um, interviews that they had, and I was so much more interesting than they portrayed me. Um, but I mean, it was tough, and I was the youngest person there. So I think more than some people definitely saw it, but other people were like, oh, that's a pretty cool frat to be a part of, you know, that kind of challenging uh, thing. And, you know, just to show that I went out there and did it, and I'm not afraid to do different things. Things, I think is where it's really cool. Wolfgang. Uh, um, I'm yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah uh, Wolfgang Munzer from Germany, Rangeport Press Agency. You mentioned earlier you started with cards. Um, over in Europe, that's a perfect place for open wheel preparation. Did you ever test the open wheel car after cards? I did. So I actually raced in the Skip Barber Racing Series and was their first female champion. And then I raced in Formula BMW USA. And after that series, in partially because of my age and partially just because we were trying to market myself, you know, as a racer in the U.S. We, we went to NASCAR, but I still love road courses. Um, you know, Road America is still one of my favorite tracks. Stan. Yeah, uh, Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. What was it about racing that put you in love with it? Winning. Um, and uh, that's a pretty awesome feeling. But more so than that, I mean, for me, it's always been kind of putting together a puzzle. And, um, you know, you have to make sure the cart's perfect. You have to make sure you're perfect and the setup is perfect and the conditions, you know, you don't get taken out. And so this kind of part luck, part preparation puzzle that it was was always really interesting to me physically and then also just from a, a mental standpoint. Chris. Chris Knight, CatTrends.com. Hi, Julia. Hi. Um, I'm just curious, after 13 of 14 top 10 finishes with Bill Bacchanale Racing, you completed all but one lap. You prompted a move to Sunrise Ford Racing, which is doesn't seem to have the expectations or the mindset to compete at the level that Bill Bacchanale does. Why, what prompted the move? There were a bunch of factors that prompted the move, and at the end of the day, we, you know, at Julia Landau Racing, we have to analyze both short-term and long-term development, and so this, with a bunch of different factors, there, we really felt like a, a change was needed, and, you know, I still talk with Bill, and we ended on, you know, perfectly good terms, um, but just for, for what I needed and what, what teams were willing to give, uh, the Sunrise 4 team seemed like a really great move, and I'm super excited to go out there and work with Bill Sedgwick, and we're really going after that first win. Next question, Tom. Tom Baker, Race Chaser Online, Performance Motorsports Network. Good to see you again, Julia. You too. Talk a little bit about uh, going from racing to survivor, back to racing, and now that ascent to and through the K&N series. What's it been like for you as far as just a, an adjustment from one thing to another, all while trying to focus on doing so well in school as you did as well? That's a pretty hefty schedule. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, traveling for racing when I was younger and in middle school kind of set the stage for me being able to be really disciplined in what I was doing when I was doing it and really compartmentalize. And, um, you know, I like being active. I like being busy. And so it's a lifestyle that really suits my personality and you know there's a life short and there's a lot that I want to get done so all the work and the busyness and moving around is part of the job. Last question. Hi. Kelly Morrison, NASCAR Preview and Press Guide. With all your success last year being honored with the 2016 Driver Achievement Award, being named the series top breakthrough driver and being featured in Forbes 30 under 30, um, how do you plan on changing the game in this upcoming season? Uh, first and foremost, winning. Um, that's what I plan on doing. But really, I think showcasing all of the other aspects of building a racing career that go into racing and really showing the off-track stuff and the fan stuff. And just, um, you know, 
elevating myself. I have high expectations for myself, and my team has high expectations for me, both from a Julia Landau Racing and from a Sunrise Ford perspective. And we just want to show that I can do it too, that women can do it too, and that the unexpected participant can really exceed and excel um, with a lot of hard work and luck and collaboration. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Julia Landauer. Coming up next, we will have the president. All right, welcome to the stage. NASCAR's 14-time most popular driver, two-time Daytona 500 winner, recently became a married man, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nice to see you. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's good to be here and uh, appreciate it. Uh, excited, uh, you know, to be here for Media Day, and, and um, which is new for me this year. Usually, uh, you know, you kind of tell everybody Daytona will get here when it gets here. Uh, but I'm excited about the season. Can't get here fast enough. So, um, really thankful uh, to be to be back and and to be working and uh, can't wait for uh, for opportunities to test at Phoenix in a couple couple of days and and then get on to Daytona and get to work. All right, one non-serious question, then we'll open it up to the crowd. Who has a better beard game going on right now, you or Jimmy Johnson? Jimmy, I told him he um, sent me a picture of him skiing, and I said, man. He said, I'm getting ready to knock his, knock his beard off. I said, you better have that in Daytona because you get more drafting help. So <laughs> I, uh, I said, that's a badass beard, and I'd keep it if I, I were you. So he's hung on to it. I don't know if he's just taking my advice or what, but I'm certainly uh, pro beard. And, and you know, I, I, if I'd have known he was going to come so strong, I would have worked on mine a little more. Um, Amy's got me keeping it pretty short these days, but... Um, I certainly do uh, envy what Jimmy's got going on. It's awesome. All right, we'll start right here. Bob Pockris. No, we'll go over. Bob Pockris, ESPN. Uh, your two big events in December. Can you compare the emotions of getting approved to race and the emotions of getting married? Uh, well, the you know the approved to race kind of thing was a slow evolution and and something you could see coming and get you know physically and mentally prepared for. So I wasn't like. I don't know. I, I, you have to get, you know, to get approved to race is one thing, but to decide to race is another. You know, mentally, you have to make the decision uh, if you want to keep racing, and if you want to keep racing, you got to go in 100%. This isn't. This is the top elite, you know, series of motorsports in North America, and if you're going to be out there, you got to. You can't. You know, you can't do it. Uh, without 100 percent so i had to you know answer a lot of personal questions of myself and and just really you know you know buy in so all that was a big process and uh i'm really happy with what i've decided to do um but it wasn't that emotional um getting married has been you know incredible i uh wish i had figured all this out sooner. I'm frustrated with myself that I took so long to to grow up and um cuz I got an amazing wife and and she's changed my life, you know. She's really helped me as a person become better on all fronts, um personally and all my friendships and relationships, um how I react with people and and treat people and and obviously being in my professional life, she's helped me as a driver and so it's been great. So uh, just hoping to, uh, you know, enjoy, um, you know, what's left of my career, and, and hopefully I get to make the decisions on that myself um, as far as how much further I race and uh, going to start a family and all that good stuff too. So got a lot of things to look forward to. Really excited about my future. All right, let's go over here. We'll go Kenny and Holly, and then we'll hop to the other side of the room. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com over here, Dale. Um, First of all, Jimmy has more gray in his beard, so I don't know. I don't know how you want to take that, but this is not really a what. What did you miss about last year? But because the the package has changed again going into this year, so that's kind of an unknown. What What is the one thing that not racing the last half of last year? What, what was the? How was that detrimental to what you're trying to do this year? Detrimental. Um, you know, I, I think that if you look at you know, any, being out of the car, you, you know, you you th you hope you could come back and jump right back in and not miss a beat. But 
like I said, this is a top series, and 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 any time away, you're going, you're getting behind. So, I'm really anxious and 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 uh, curious as to where where we shake up early in the season, how we can do, where, how competitive we can be, what what if any learning curve is there for me, and uh, so they'll we'll figure all that out though. But. Um, I missed the camaraderie. I mean, that's the one thing that I'll probably miss the most when when I'm not racing anymore is just the friendships in the in the inside the track, not just the garage, but in with the media. Uh, I won't get to talk to you guys as much. Uh, you know, I've got an awesome road crew. We're all buddies. We all communicate every day. Uh, we use an app to be able to communicate and text every day with each other as a group, and so it's very close knit. Uh, sort of family and and I'm going to miss all that. It's so fun to be able to go as a team and do something and succeed. Even when you don't succeed, those guys are the ones you lean on, you know, when you have a bad day. So we all kind of lift each other up and I'm going to miss all that. So that was something that was difficult to watch someone else do in your place. Uh, I was certainly jealous and envious of of Jeff and and Alex working with my guys. At the same time, I was happy for Alex and, and and glad that Jeff was available, but you definitely were uh, wishing it was you in there getting, you know, getting to work. Holly Kane. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com, over here by Kenny. Um, I wanted to follow up a little bit with what you said when you sat down. I think sometimes uh, it's fair to say that after you've been doing it a while, uh, racing for a while, coming in and, and having to answer questions and doing media tours and things like that, you're kind of, people may not get so excited about it. And we see the young guys come in and they're very excited and this is like so cool. And I sense from you that you're kind of like, you know what, this is a, this is a good thing. Could you just talk a little bit about that? And, and, you know, it's not something to take for granted. Obviously. That's it. You know, you do take it for granted. You take your job for granted when you're doing it every week. All you, us as a society, we get, we get better and better at complaining and we, uh, you know, the drivers aren't any different. We, we, you know, we moan and complain about everything, but uh, when you get a chance to kind of step back and watch it, uh, I got a chance to be in the garage area at Dover and watch the drivers come in that morning for practice, and it was a really eye-opening experience to see. It's like an out-of-body experience almost to watch all that happen, and I, you know, look looking at them as and and knowing that that was me, and uh, so I. You know, I got to see the drivers from a different point of view and, and got to see the whole sport from a different point of view. Being out of the car certainly made me anxious to get back in and, and happy. You know, I, I'm happy to be able to come back here and uh, and continue to compete. Um, got real close to not being able to compete, you know. Got got real close to being, uh, being someone else's decision whether I competed or not. And I always said, you know, people – have asked me ever since I turned 40 when I would retire and, and all that. And all I wanted to do was be able to make that choice myself. I don't know when I'm going to stop racing. Um, but I want to be able to make that choice and not have it made for me. So all that stuff really showed me how much I, uh, how much I got going for me and how fun this really is and how, you know, you can make, you can make it really difficult or you can enjoy it. This is, this is an incredible position to be in, and it's an awesome sport, and, and driving the cars is fun, and, uh, you know, doing the photo shoots, making the commercials, talking to the media, all those things are fun, and, uh, but you can, make it, uh, you can make it not any fun if you want to, and sometimes, you know, as human beings, we have a tendency to do that, but I really, uh, you know, the grind, man, it's so long. You're doing it year after year after year, and uh, it doesn't seem like we have much of an off season, and and uh, even when you know you actually work harder in the off season, people are, people think you take off and don't do anything. You, that's when everybody knows you got time off. So they're like, hey, come do this appearance here, or come do this photo shoot, and and we're gonna book you, you know, book all them days that you're that you're not doing anything because you're not racing finally. So they can get you know all the sponsor uh, responsibilities. They have an opportunity to 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 check all those boxes off. You'll have so many appearances still on the table at the end of the season, and they want to use them. So uh, those guys, you know, we, we, we get a break, but uh, just from the driving part pr pretty much. So I could totally, uh, you know, see how you kind of get wound up and burn out a little bit. But 
but um, I'm, you know, I'm certainly not feeling that way right now, and uh, I'll be much more self-aware, I guess, going down the road to to try to remember, you know, what this is and what position I'm in, and not take it for granted. It's easy to do. Well, that's the fastest 10 minutes of media tour. Dale Jr., thanks for your time. Good luck. Have fun the rest of the All day, right. and uh, we'll see you in Daytona. Stay a little longer, but uh, yeah. I guess we'll get going. Yep. We'll see you guys. Okay, I had to rush Jr. off the stage. That's not very popular. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Yeah. All right, we welcome to the stage now from uh, Hendrick Motorsports, Casey Kane. Casey, welcome to the media tour. Good to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, Media tour. Uh, looking forward, you know, to today. There's a lot, a uh, lot to be talked about. A lot going on in the sport and with our team and uh, Hendrick Motorsports. So it's been a nice uh, with Mr. H and the uh, everybody that got inducted into the Hall of Fame. That was a really neat couple of days. Uh, we had some some great times listening to the stories and and things at the hall. And then uh, we had a nice party. Saturday night for Mr. H, and uh, we had a blast. Henrik Motorsports and a lot of the people uh, from Hag and stuff. So it was, a, it was a big party and a really good time. All, all thanking Mr. H and also uh, congratulating him on his success and everything that he's done for so many of us. All right, let's go ahead and open this up for questions here for Casey Kane. Uh, we'll go Wolfgang and then back to Tom Jensen. Uh, Casey here. Uh, Wolfgang Monza, Rangeport Press Agency from Germany. Um, last year, um, the driver replacing Dale Jr., Alex Bowman, had a pole position. I can't remember where, but uh, during the season. Um, how identical are all your four cars? When one driver is quick, the other drivers are not in principle. Can you set up identical your car like the driver who is leading either timesheets and qualifying or race? Um, it's, that's a pretty complicated question because there's a lot that goes into that and there's especially last year you know everybody's kind of in different areas and and things I feel like uh, HMS is in a, a great direction and we made a lot of those gains uh, the last 12 to 14 races of the season and we've even went further for this season so I would say looking ahead uh, to answer some of that question, a lot of the things are going to be very similar on all the cars, um, you know, as the future goes. So uh, I think we're headed in a great direction with that. All right. Uh, in the back to Tom Jensen. Hi, Casey. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Do you feel a higher level of optimism coming in to this year because of how you guys ran toward the end of the year, or do you feel pressure because you missed the chase the last couple of years? Uh, I think it's more optimism, you know, and just feeling good about where we where we went last year. You know, where we started, consistent 18th to 20th was not anything that we wanted. And uh, after the, you know, the last 12 to 14 races, we were 8th to 10. And uh, so that, that jump, that consistency that we showed throughout the whole season for the speed of the car and, um, you know, I, th I thought was good. And uh, we were working hard to make another jump because 8th to 10th isn't where we want to be either, but uh, definitely a big, you know, a lot of prog progress from where we were the first half of the season to where we ended, and we can only build on that. And we know where we made those gains as a company and as a team because we made them in both areas, and uh, we'll just get better from there. All right, we'll go over here and then to Holly. Don Gamble wrapping on racing. Casey, you're in the top of the sport. You got here much like Tony through the sprint cars into NASCAR. And I first met you at Larnville Speedway years ago. As a matter of fact, I did a victory lane interview with you when you were still driving. But two, I think it was two years ago, I was fascinated. You were at the track and you would think you'd want to see everybody or they would want to see you, but you were standing in turn three as a car owner watching your driver. You were just a fan that night. Your love for sprint car racing is amazing. Do you think uh, that with your teams you will continue to do this or just focus on the NASCAR? Well, I think my love for racing, you know, in general, I, I love racing, I love the sport, uh, all different types of racing, but sprint cars is something that I have a, a long background in and have really enjoyed learning uh, it's kind of how I learned how to race was in dirt cars. Sprint cars was a, was a huge part of that. So 
to have those teams, Brad Sweet and Darren Pittman, are, uh, you know, to me that's some of the, the most fun I have each year is when I can actually go to the racetrack, support those guys, stand in the corner, grandstands, wherever it may be, and watch kind of their every move. And um, to me, that's, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy having those teams. You know, we have the employees that we have, the drivers that we have, and hopefully we can keep those going for a long time because it, it's something that means a lot to me. Well, your success as a sprint car driver, does that put un unnecessary pressure on your drivers? Uh, I think, I don't think a whole lot. You know, I think that, you know, they they know what I expect, and but they put, you know, they have all the things that they expect of themselves, and, and they put that time in, they put the work in, and they're two of the best drivers you're going to find in sprint cars anywhere, and I'm glad that they, uh, that they raced for me, and, um, you know, each year they're just trying to be the best that they can. So I, I respect them a lot. That that series, uh, that traveling, that it's a long season that that those teams go through, and they do a great job with it. So my respect's high for them. All right, we're going to go Holly, and then over to Daniel. Holly Kane, uh, hi Casey. Hi. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about why you feel more optimistic going in this year. You know, throughout your career, you've had change of makes, teams, crew chiefs. You've really not had a real long period of the same person, same team, same kind of car. What is it in particular that makes you feel, you know, better or optimistic that you're looking forward to this year? Well, I think, you know, first off, anytime any of us have a month or two off and we all know we're starting at zero uh, here in a couple of weeks, it's everybody feels good about it, you know, is excited to get the season started. For me, though, a lot of it has to do with the way we finished last year, uh, the way that the company uh, the progress of the company and then the progress of our team, what Jimmy Johnson did, what Chase Elliott did, um, you know, those things to me were, were key and they were highlights. And, and our five team did the same. You know, we made a lot of gains and we're much stronger the last uh, 12 races of the season. So since Homestead, since Monday after Homestead, I've been with Keith, um, I've been with our engineers, and all of us as a team from the pit crew side to the um, – you know the the road guys, the guys building the cars. We've we've been a team, and we've been working to progress in those same areas that we made the gains in, um, and we've had a couple months to do that. So I feel like that is, you know, a lot of hard work. Everybody's working hard, but for us, we're we're going in the right direction, and it's going to be it's going to show this year. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Daniel McFadden with NBC Sports. We, we have a pretty impressive rookie class coming in this year. Well, if Remembering back to the weeks and months ahead of your first full-time cup season, what, what were the, the strong emotions that you were feeling or the thoughts that were on your mind, and who were you leaning on going into the, this very big part of your life? Yeah, I had a, it was all really new to me and really uh, fresh and exciting. Um, you know, I had Bill Elliott and Ray Evernham to, to really lean on and work with. Tommy Baldwin was my crew chief. He was super open and, and uh, communicated a lot. So that was really nice early on to, you know, have people like that. Just lots of information, lots of things to pull from. And I was, you know, I'd ran one full year Bush series and uh, was hoping that I could figure out a cup car, but did, really didn't know because I didn't get to run any, any races prior. Uh, so we did some testing, felt great testing, and was just really looking forward to the season. And, and uh, we we were good right from the start. Uh, we'll know, go so over I was, here and then uh, really happy sorry, with that. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll go over here and then we'll try to get to Chris here. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. Casey, is there a specific performance goal you want to meet this year? Is it one win, two wins, or any certain number or barometer? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, winning would be great. You know, and that's definitely where we want to be. I think that's where everybody wants to be. You, you have to win. Uh, in this sport, you have to run up front. You have to lead laps. If you want to be part of the playoffs, you need to do all that, and then you need to do it in the playoffs as well if you want to win a championship. So, you know, to me, consistently running in the top ten, uh, if we do that as a team, week in, week out, we're going to have our fair share, our shots to win, whether it's a stage, whether it's uh, the final stage. So, yeah, I've... Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Just looking forward to performance and having a, you know, much faster cars and being, you know, doing a better job behind the wheel in uh, basically every aspect. Nice transition to bring playoffs in there. That was, that was good. Yeah. No chase reference. That's really strong. All right. Let's uh, wrap it up here with Chris. 
Chris Knight, catchtrends.com. Casey, I was just wondering, um, we've seen a lot of drivers have different things that make them reflect on things outside the race car. You're recently, you know, I think your son's a couple years old now, but has he made you reflect on things and make you realize what, what life's all about outside of racing? Well, he's uh, he just turned 15 months, so um, he's growing and changing so quickly, and he's a complete blast. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely look at things a little bit differently. When it comes to racing, I don't look at it a whole lot differently because I've always had such a passion for driving and uh, learning about the cars, being part of the team side of things, and, and working working hard to be the best that I can be. Uh, so that hasn't changed a whole lot. I'd, I really want to be in victory lane with him. That's one thing that I do think about. But, you know, other than that, I think it's away from the track, how it's kind of changed my life and how I look at day to day and um, kind of tonight when I'm done with all this, you know, how much fun I'll have tonight. So it's, there's a lot of things that he's changed, but racing, not, not so much. Casey, thank you for your time. Good luck this year. Thank you, guys.